Hello, welcome. Welcome to Kaylin Castell and Eric Roth. And I'm very happy and excited today because we're gonna be talking about something that is very passionate for them and passionate, I, I mean, the, they feel passionately about and then I feel passionately about and that they know way more about than I do, which is the wisdom and the voice of the stars. And Kaylin and Eric both are shamanic astrologers and they are the founders of My Star Alchemy, which is what we're gonna be hearing about today. So in the bro big broad sense, um, what I'm really excited to ask you both about is essentially your relationship to the stars and why do you feel so passionately about our relationship to the stars and why did you start Maestro Alchemy and then what are you offering <laughs> because you're offering a lot of things that I know I am very interested in and that um, I have a background in astrology I feel very competent to be an astrologer, but I'm, I come from more of the evolutionary astrology side of things. So there's this whole world that I'm just starting to learn about, and you guys are experts in a lot of all of that. So which of you would like to begin with? I'll start. I, I actually got introduced yeah. to this back in 1990. So it's been 32 years. <laughs> and I remember just being in this place of awe, re realizing that we could have our own direct connection and relationship with not only the astrological symbols and where the planets are at any given time, but the stars themselves and how the planets are moving through the stars. And we can, you know, we could start getting our own direct downloads and our own information. Uh, and that is something that was not happening back in 1990. Uh, it, it, I, had not run across it anywhere else. And most astrologers then were just looking at a chart and telling you what they saw and that's all good, but they didn't have their own even direct connection necessarily other than what they had studied. And so this was a way of um, a teaching that was providing an opportunity to help people figure out how to go out underneath the sky, connect to the stars and the planets and to have their get their own direct information and part of the reason this is so exciting is that in ancient times lots of ancient cultures that's what they did they spent a lot of time under the sky they weren't watching tv <laughs> they were they were spending time with the sky getting the direct information the star they were under starlight all the time they were um really taking in directly starlight into their body and that's something that we're not always doing anymore. Or even if we are, we don't necessarily know what it's about. We don't know how to tune in. We don't know how to make that a more alive connection for ourselves. And so I got super excited about that. And I remember my after my first night sky class, I went on a camping trip with my parents and my kids. And, uh, and I was able to point out a whole lot of things in the sky. I felt like it was like a fraction of what I had been shown, like a tiny fraction of what I'd been shown. But nobody there knew anything. So I wowed them. <laughs> I was like, oh, this, and made it even more alive and more real and more cool for me because I was like, oh, now I can share this with other people and get them excited about connecting with the stars. So I've had a passion for this for a really long time. And um, I feel like we're one of the things that we don't necessarily realize is that everything's evolving in this, uh, in our in our world, in our universe. And so the energies of the stars themselves, not talking about the seasonal signs. I know a lot of times people think that's stars, but that's not. Um, but the stars themselves, the constellations and the stars, they're evolving over time. And so to now get our own direct connection, to learn how to do that, to look at what we've known about them and to also now start bringing in um, our, a new relationship to them, it couldn't be a more perfect time. Mm. Eric, what about you? Beautiful. Thank you. Yes. Um, my first uh, experience with the stars uh, came when I was between 18 and 19, and I got to have like a spontaneous mini trip with my friends up into the mountains north of LA. And it was the first time I got to see uh, the star field. Uh, growing up in LA, you only see 
a few stars, if you're lucky, of course, the moon, maybe Venus and or Jupiter, but you don't get to see very many stars in LA and the city. And so going out to the mountains and getting quite a distance, you can still see LA from where we were, but it was the first time I saw just a glimpse of the Milky Way galaxy across the sky. And it just was uh, shocking and stunning to my body, to my mind, and I was in total awe. And I felt, I felt it sort of like a transmission through that process uh, that was home to me. And it struck me really, really hard and it never left me. Uh, it was during a particular cycle, uh, Caitlin, I know you're familiar with, and, and Martha, I'm sure, uh, a nodal return. That was uh, between summer of my, summer before my 19th birthday, and which was going to be in, um, in November. So that was my first hit on that, but I didn't really learn, truly learn about the stars until I started studying shamanic astrology in the uh, 2004, 2005 with Daniel Jumar and Caitlin Castell, and I started taking night sky courses with them. And it just, again, completely, like uh, this whole world opened up for me. And it spoke to me in ways that you, beyond just the male chart, beyond just a sun sign, moon sign, a rising sign, and it actually helped even deepen that process with those planetary signs there. So we, we have a, a further um, informed knowledge that comes through there. In fact, our stories, humanity's stories are written in the stars and have all the, or the a lot of the majority of the mythologies on the pantheons across the globe from ancient times dealt with the stars and the planets in one form or another, including when ages end and the new ages begin. So this, our, our little um, connection with the stars informs us and we inform them at the same time. So we have this really powerful connection with that relationship with it. And when we connect with the stars, we also deepen our relationship with the earth because we are in space and we are uh, spinning, we are orbiting, we are wobbling, we are doing all kinds of things in our relationship to the other planets, the sun, the moon, and, and beyond, the cosmos. So we have, we have that relationship, and if we can connect ourselves to that realm above us, we also connect ourselves to the realm right under our feet. In fact, the word understanding comes from the literal standing under the night sky you are understanding what you're, I mean, literally the, all, all that is wow. in that moment. Um, and of course, on a practical level, the night sky, the stars, the constellations are, per, are amazing for when it comes to, you know, our connection to navigating, you know, the seas and the land, um, agriculture, and telling time and forming calendars. You know, there's all these practical applications there, but from a spiritual metaphysical perspective, it's, it's really expansive and broad and deep and, and is infinite. And I have, it's, to me, it's a, it's a temple for me where that I, I stand under and uh, speak to and connect with. And so it continues to be my passion. And um, this is part of a big part of why I, Part of my star alchemy and and teach the night sky on my own along with the night sky course that uh, martha you're going to be part of and kaylin you'll be showing up too in september so uh 2022 so yeah that's um there's my introduction there Thank cool you. um yeah and i have many ways i relate to all of that personally absolutely i could say many things but I'm curious if you, either or both of you have a particular memory that comes up for you, um, some experience you've had, you know, with a particular star or with a particular constellation that's that, that's coming up for you right this minute that maybe you would want to share to give examples of how these transmissions 
maybe have personally impacted you? Um, I'll share one that, like that? Happened, that happened for me back in the 90s. I was doing an all night um, vision quest under the stars. And I would, I would go out and just sleep under the stars at different times. But this one was more sort of formally ceremonial, something that we... Um, for people to become uh, certified in the Shamanic Astrology Mystery School, it's something that they're asked to do. So I was doing it as a more formal kind of thing. And I set up my circle, I set all my prayers, I was putting everything into place. And I was seeing that the lion was getting ready to, it was um, on the Western horizon. It was, and I could see Regulus and Regulus, my Pluto, Jupiter, Midheaven are, are um, near Regulus. And so, and one of the things I was asking for was help in, um, having greater confidence in myself, greater um, greater ability to know that I know what I know because I don't always know that, <laughs> or I haven't always known that in the past. It's like, oh yeah, I don't. I think I know this, but maybe I don't really. Or you know, the the doubts, the uncertainty, the questions that we can have, and uh, and I was asking for all of the energies around um, the mysteries of the heart because Regulus is the the heart star of the lion. And mm -hmm. also the queens, because we can take this back to the queens of, um, ac you know, across time, that that energy where they would were standing in their sovereignty and knowing and being able to help um, when it was healthy, guide and support other people in being able to do that themselves. And so I was like, I, I really wanted to claim that. And uh, so when I got done saying that I was watching and right above um, Regulus, this shooting star, like really bright shooting star went straight down. And I don't know that I've seen shooting stars go straight down that often. And it winked out just above Regulus, like it was infusing it with this what? what? Yeah. And I was like, wow. Whoa. And I'm even just saying it right now, I'm getting like this rush of energy. <laughs> yeah, I am too. Yes. I was back in 1998. I was like wow. you know, a long time ago. Uh 20, what, four years ago. And uh and and it's been a long journey since then, but it has, I know that that intention, that infusion and what really was being transmitted to me from the sky in that moment has been playing out over all this time. And, mm -hmm. and now here we are with my star alchemy. It was like, oh, and you really want to have your stories told, don't you? <laughs> what, so in that moment, I'm just curious, in that moment, what did you feel or what did you feel like the impact was later or is there... Anything yeah, like I at the, at the moment I just I was just like in a wow moment, so I didn't have like a you know left brain sort of knowing about it. I just had like a whole body like oh wow that was that was huge, and I feel like it's been more that way ever since. Like I don't necessarily I couldn't necessarily say oh that meant this or you know whatever, but I feel like it's been a guiding principle for me, um, mm -hmm. having had that experience ever since. And sometimes we are a little addicted to wanting to know things from a left brain perspective yeah. and be able to define it and put a, a thing on it. And uh, um, I didn't have a, an, I didn't feel a need to do that. I just felt like I would had just been giving super high magical experience. And, mm -hmm. um, and I carry that with me like, wow, the, mm -hmm. that was, yeah. And yeah. so these are the kinds of things and actually was sharing this experience. I was doing an astrology hub um, podcast with um, Amanda. Amanda. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. And I was sharing that story. And then she was telling the story about how she was doing these intentions. And there was all these meteors that kept every time she'd say an intention and a meteor would go across the sky. She was like, whoa. And it just gave her a whole new understanding of what was happening because she was sleeping out under the stars at night too. And, um, and again, this is something that is now starting to flood the um, realm of the astrological world that it's like, yes, we need to have a relationship with the sky too, with the stars, with the planets, with the, you know, what's really happening and how they're moving through the sky. And so she was doing this whole thing with Jupiter and, um, and she got that experience. So, wow. You know, you just, you set an intention, you go out and the magic happens. Mm -hmm. Eric, what about you? Do you have a story in particular? Uh, there's, there's a few I could choose from for sure. Um, I was just remembering uh, the talk about Regulus. In 2018, I I drove down to a uh, retreat center at Marcy Hot Springs in California, um, which is uh, like an hour and a half south of Santa Cruz. And I, in fact, these friends of mine, they moved recently to Mount Chasta area, but they were, one's a shamanic uh, practitioner and, and uh, nature guide, 
and the other is a, a psychic channeler. And so they held this workshop there. And the first morning that we were camped out, the first morning that uh, I woke up, we were planning on doing a drumming ceremony. And it was early, like the end of the first week of September. And I didn't like consciously realize that this was happening. I had struggled to get to this place because of a massive fire in the Mount Shasta area that uh, just took an extra two hours of driving around the mountain over past uh, Interstate 5 that was closed just to get to my hotel like at close to nine o'clock at night, even though I left with plenty of time. So there was like this long struggle to get there. But once I got there, I was able to relax into the space. And I, we were climbing this hill up to this ridge so we can get a good view of the sky and the sunrise. So as, the, as we were going up there, and um, kept looking at the sky, I saw Mercury, Regulus, and the waning crescent moon all rise in a row mm -hmm. over this. It was like a perfect line mm -hmm. rising up. And just the, the the fiery energy of that of that space, you know, they were in, of course, I think Mercury was in Leo at that time. And then of course Regulus is in the sign of Virgo now. So you had this this combination of energy that was hitting, uh, hitting me. And I was moving into a place that was going to be this sacred container for our drumming and for the welcoming of the sun. And I felt like I was in a, like a, a temple setting and that these were really a really special alignment that was happening. And I, I really connected to that, to that space. I couldn't really see the whole line because of the twilight sky uh, at dawn. But I saw those, I saw Regulus and Mercury and the moon. And it really struck me at how personal and magical it is just to be in that presence there. And that even through the, the fires of, of the late summer, to get to that place of ceremony and um, almost like graceful perfection that comes through, it, it, was, it was simply remarkable. Not many people noticed it, even though I pointed it out to a couple of people. It wasn't like they were really tuned into the sky in that way, the way I am. Like I keep looking up, I keep looking up at, at the stars. That's just innate in me. So that was that was one profound experience I had in, in recent years with one of the stars. Um, Regulus is a is a really powerful uh, ancient star that human beings have connected with for countless thousands of years, and it also is connected to the ancient Sphinx in Egypt as well, among other things. Um, we could go on and on about that particular star, but that's definitely, uh, you know, things that, uh, you know, hit me and, and the stories about it. Uh, really, I can feel it more than just the intellectual exercise. I can feel it in my soul, in my body. Yeah. One of the things for me that the, spirit world conveys so strongly is this need for us similar to what you both are saying need this very strong need for us to come back to the reality that wisdom is so much more than our brains and I am guessing you both have similar experiences like this but I get I I, I have very 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 vivid memories of many lifetimes on this planet of being the kind of human who would be, I guess you could say, I don't know, whatever words you want to use for it, right? A seer or whatever it is, but that we as humans had this way of knowing just by being present, being present with the cosmos and recognizing that we're on this teeny tiny dot in the soup of literally everything else. So you know, if we think about air, like we breathe air, it comes in and out of us. That's what's surrounding us in the atmosphere of this planet. But then that's so little compared to what is actually moving. If we just think about energy as waves, the waves of sunlight we know are hitting our bodies, right? And penetrating our bodies and, and going into the plants to the point that they can do photosynthesis and grow. But then what about the waves 
coming emitting from literally everything else in all of existence. We forget that that is a thing. It's a physiological, actual scientific fact. Um, mm -hmm. So, so then, I mean, that's like scientifically just simply true. But then, in terms of how we get knowledge, how we get the the wisdom that our world needs. That's, this is such a huge thing that keeps coming through in my prayers is that we need to come back to being open in the way that we have been as humans so that the knowledge is going to come through us. And, and we each have different ways it's meant to come through us, but it's not just our brains coming up with ideas. It's our whole being yeah. in concert with this planet and literally everything else and whatever you want to call it, God or the divine or whatever. But um, anyway, I feel it so strongly. <laughs> so, I yeah. love what you're saying, Martha, because uh, part of the challenge that we have living in this time, as we're growing and evolving into a new time, but, but the time we've inherited, there's been a lot of manipulation and control and, and conditioning of people. And so they uh, don't necessarily question what they're being told. They don't necessarily uh, think for themselves. They don't necessarily want to have their own direct connection to source energy, divine energy, star energy, the sun. I mean, the sun, without the sun, we don't have life or light here on planet earth. So the sun is super important and people have been conditioned now to believe don't go out in the sun. Uh, but now they're finding, well, you, but the best way to get vitamin D is to go out into the sun. Just don't overdo it. <laughs> and sunscreen is really not that great for you. Um, I mean, if you're going to be out in the sun all day, yes, that's a good thing. But if you're only going to be out for 15 minutes, don't put on sunscreen. Just go get this natural sunlight kind of thing. So these are the kinds of things that have been, um, it's like, you know, how do we condition people so we can control them? And if we want to be more empowered and whole within ourselves, it's about getting um, reattuned to the mysteries that are always there for us, whether we're tuned into it or not, they're always there for us. And we can inform them as Eric was saying, and they can inf inform us. And so when we have that living relationship, we have that greater wholeness within ourselves. Um, it's really exciting. And, and the more and more people that are waking up to this and, and realizing, oh, not only go out and be in the sunlight, go out and be in the starlight. <laughs> mm, yeah. And if you know what stars you're looking at, then you can tune in and you can send prayers and you can tune into that energy and ask if there's any information for you from that particular star or that particular part of the sky. Maybe it's a constellation that you want to tune into completely um, receive a download from, but whatever that is, um, it's time for us to reclaim that because that is the, as you were saying, it's like this powerful thing that we can tune into that everybody has the ability to do if they choose to do it. And if they don't, that's fine too. But, uh, you know, it's really fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, Amazing and magical. Like I, I, I have so many magical stories I can tell about I'm my sure you around that. <laughs> <laughs> I just told one that one's enough <laughs> But, oh my gosh, it is it's just never ending how they, these energies show up. And I know, Eric, you have lots of magical stories too. We can just, we can, we can probably write a book, yeah. <laughs> but just on our yeah. magical stories around the stars. <laughs> Maybe you should. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And I could go on and on and on asking things and saying things, but um, do you guys want to now switch and uh, describe my star alchemy? what it is, what you offer, anything you want to share around all of that? Do you want to start yeah. there? Sure. Uh, so My Star Alchemy uh, is an organization that was formed a year ago with Kaylin and I, and we formed it in order to teach about the stars. And the original intention, uh, well, the first class that we uh, shared about was called the Magical Stars um, all Bohemian, Bohemian stars, which are the magical stars of the ancient alchemists. And they're about these 15 st magical stars. And the origins are a little mysterious as to why those 15 were chosen, because there's other prominent stars that are not included in there that we, Kayla and I have gone back and forth asking about and trying to speculate as to why. But that was the original. And we did a series of six classes plus some bonus videos in there. 
And we taught in that cl in class how to work with them magically, how to work with them in ceremony, how to create like even star bundles and um, star uh, uh, objects and, and connecting um, our own heart, our own being to each of the stars or and finding if one of these stars might be a personal star of ours as well. And that's also a lot of fun to do when you have I mean, everybody on some level has a personal star, at least one, if not more than one. And that's another way to connect. So we, we launched into that space because we love the stars, we're passionate about them. And now we're moving into this new, uh, this new uh, webinar series called The Magic and Mystery of the Zodiacal Constellations. So these are the constellations that are all along the, uh, the path of the sun, what is called the ecliptic. And these are the constellations that gave rise to the quote, the names of the signs, um, but they are not the signs as Kaylin has uh, shared about earlier. But we talk about those constellations, their, their stories, their magic, their stars, how to work with them, how to connect with them. And um, just to give people anybody an understanding a deeper understanding of the sky itself so this is just another layer there and also uncovering you know if some of these stars might be personal stars too for a person um and that's a whole different topic but um there every again everybody has their own uh, personal stars and we start that in um september at mystaralchemy.com It'll so, be live, so, so you can you can yes. still take the Bohemian Star class, but it's not live. Though we will do a live Q and A probably um, early next year, sometime after we're done with this class, and then um, and then you know, so if you want a live class and be able to ask us questions directly, that's you'll want to start with us in September. Yeah. Great, um, and. And then Eric, I know you also, in addition, separately are not with my star alchemy are going to be doing a live course in Arizona yes. in September, but that's different. Do you want to say anything about that? Yeah, that's outside of the, my star alchemy, uh, organization, but that's done through the, uh, I guess the rebirth, what used to be known, the for, uh, formerly known as like the art of print formerly known as the shamanic astrology mystery school is now the uh, the turning of the ages mystery school. Um, so I'm working with that organization as a, facilit as a facilitator to teach cosmology in the night sky. It's a, there's three full days and two part days in there. And it's uh, nearly every night that we're there, we're going to be, I'm going to be out of the stars sharing about this. And um, I know, Kaylin, you plan on being there for a, a short time. And Martha, you uh, definitely signed up for that yes. and there'll be there'll be others there and uh it's 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 in a place called bisbee arizona which has real and, and where um the host of this uh, there's a person that's hosting us for, for their, on their land so we'll be able to really see the night sky really powerfully and so there won't be very there'll be very little light pollution or interference there and that's from september 22nd 21st, September 21st through the 25th, right over the equinox time. And there'll be a ceremony to honor uh, the sunset uh, at equinox on the 22nd. And um, that in fact, the actual equinox, equinox itself happens within about a half an hour of the actual sunset. So it's the timing is really amazing, actually. So I'm really excited about doing that. And you can find out more about that at the uh, returning of the age of mystery school.com and I can there could be a link in the description um, uh, in this video. Great. So <clears throat> so your live in person yes class under the stars is September 21st to 25th. Yes. Being taught by you, Eric, but Kaylin, you will be there at some point as well. <laughs> and I'll be there but as a participant, not as a teacher. <laughs> and and then the live online course that you two are doing together through my star alchemy also begins in september what day sixth i, re I remember yes september 6th 
September 6th. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. Plus anybody who wants to on their own do the Bohemian Stars class through My Star Alchemy can do that anytime. Yeah. And you're planning to hold a QA maybe early 2023 to follow up from the Bohemian Stars. People that have been taking that as or maybe have taken it, even maybe even took it with us live and they and they've been tuning in and have questions. So we're going to uh, make that available to people. Yeah. Great. And um, the, oh, I had a thought and I just lost it. <laughs> okay. we'll come I back. had one more question that people might be wondering because I'm wondering a little bit. I mean, I think I know the answer to this, but um, could you give an example of, you, you talked a lot, you touched on what a personal star, that there are this thing called personal stars. And so I think that's a big, thing that people would be very curious and interested in if they're wanting to potentially take a course like this. Do you want to just explain a little more of what that means and maybe give an example? Um, One of the um, most fun ways of um, tuning into a personal star is what star was rising when you were born. Mm -hmm. And so Eric and I both have prominent stars rising when we were born. So we love this. <laughs> And for me, it was a star called Zubin el Janubi. It's in the, in the constellation of the scales, mm -hmm. uh, also known as Libra, but my, I'm 15 degrees Scorpio rising. So it wasn't Libra, it was Scorpio rising, but it was that star mm -hmm. in that constellation was what was rising at the time. So that was, that's something we'll be um, helping people to understand more fully uh, as we um, go through. It. We, we did some, some of it in the Bohemian star class. We were helping people understand that. And, oh, I know what I wanted to say about the Bohemian star class. We also, as Eric was saying, we taught people about how to make star bundles, star shields, talismans, amulets, elixirs, you know, how to do ceremony, because that's what the ancient alchemists were doing when planets were with these stars, they were doing these things. And so it's a way to enhance that star magic. And so we'll talk a little bit, we'll also be kind of looking at that in this zodiacal constellation class. Uh, there are a few of the uh, stars of the Bohemian stars on the ecliptic or the path of the planets that um, Eric was talking about that go through these constellations. Uh, like Regulus. Like Regulus, yep, yep, exactly. And um, Spica is, was oh, one I, of them too. I'm <laughs> Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Spike is, <laughs> is a magic is a Bohemian star and it's in on the ecliptic. It's like really close to the ecliptic. So yeah. Uh anyway, so we'll, we'll be um doing that. I think I just lost my train of thought. So what I'm answering a question. <laughs> <laughs> I was asking about personal stars, what that means. Personal stars. Okay, yeah, thank you. Uh <laughs> so I've had some really amazing experiences with my personal star, tuning into it, getting downloads and insights about it and literally have written an article about it because the scales there's two uh, stars of the scales there's the southern scale the northern scale and the planets sometimes will go below and not through the scales but go below the scales but sometimes they go right between them and uh out under a night sky and uh doing a night sky class back in the 90s i um we were looking at that particular constellation and uh and i was seeing that there was a planet that was getting ready to go right between them it was like really close to going between them not underneath and i was like oh it's like a stargate like i had this just download it's oh. a stargate oh my gosh it's a stargate to a new world so i wrote an article called that stargate zubin el Zanubi, uh it's a stargate to a new world or something like that so that awesome. was that was me getting a personal download from my own personal star the star that was rising at the time that i was born wow and so these once we know these things we can start tuning in and we'll get the the insights will start coming mm -hmm. if we don't know we don't know so mm -hmm. and i know eric's probably got stories about his personal star <laughs> yeah i have one that's uh near the ecliptic and then one that is a uh, more famous star that is uh in the northern um circumpolar stars meaning like it's like uh, it's vega which is really close to the northern pole star um but the one that's close to the ecliptic is nuki which is in the archer constellation what astronomers still call Sagittarius, and it's just essentially it's a figure of a human figure with a bow and arrow and it's like he or she is is 
pulling back the arrow and aiming. And so where Nuki is, is in that place where it, some, it depends on your one's perspective, like the vein of the arrow or like the, the shoulder of the, of the human figure that is pulling back that. So it's like the, the base of like taking aim towards the galactic center, because that's where the arrow is pointed in the sky it's pointed at the galactic center i mean of course the scorpion constellation is on the other side of that but that's essentially where it's pointed and so my relationship like i remember mars at one time going over that area and i was traveling in eastern oregon on my way to arizona I think it was, and for a workshop and uh i stayed at this like uh place that like a cabin at this campground and uh, in Eastern, there was hardly any lights. And I saw Mars fairly close to Nunki as it was passing through. It's just absolutely remarkable to see the, the galactic, uh, the Milky Way bowls right in the air at the Galactic Center. And for me, it was like an invitation to explore a whole new realms, new worlds, and gain new knowledge for myself. Um, that was uh, that was the um, like the, the intent, I think, or the impression that was coming through me uh, from that star. So um, I know, uh, Martha, you have your ascendant moon conjunct in Virgo there, mm -hmm. about 11 to 12 degrees. And you're where that star, there's a star that's um, by there. It's on the back of the lion. Uh, actually, there's two stars there, Sosma and Cherta. So those are like stars that represent are connected to the back and the sort of the back legs of the lion. And so that's where like, so you can see it's in the, it's in the sign of Virgo, but it's not in the constellation of the priestess where your star spike. So that, that could be for you a, uh, like a double personal star. I think though Zosma is like closer. Mm -hmm. um, and you're welcome. I would invite you to look that up and, and learn about that yourself. But the lion, of course, is a really powerful figure in the sky. And it's it's modeled, the, in fact, the Sphinx is modeled after that figure in the sky. Mm. And um, so if you're looking at that, it's 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 pretty profound. And um, there's a book that Astro, uh, who's now passed decades ago, uh, Dane Rudyard, who wrote the a book about the astrology signs and he goes into the mysteries of the Sphinx when he talks about Leo and Virgo and the, the, tran the, the, the transition and the alchemy between the two signs. Between I the just, two signs or the two constellations? The constellations and the signs. Okay, because the because the constellations, one of the things we know is that the uh, September equinox, so cool that we'll be uh, you know doing ceremony around that time. The September equinox is the the where it sits right now is between the, the lion and the priestess, also known mm -hmm. as Virgo and Leo. But but it's the zero Libra point when we have the balance of day and night. And in the northern hemisphere, we're going towards winter, and in the southern hemisphere, they're going towards summer. But all across the planet, it's the equal day of day and night point of equal day and night, and that's the zero Libra point. So when the sun reaches that point, then we have the seasonal experience, but the constellation, the backdrop behind that season has been shifting over time and is now um, at, kind of at the head of the priestess and the tail of the lion, they sort of overlap a little bit. And, uh, and, and that is consider considered the Sphinx point. And the Sphinx was literally built facing east so it could see when the lion is rising in the east, it, it was rising at the, in the east at the equinox um point it was looking at itself like the mirror like looking at itself it's pretty cool <laughs> so these are the kinds of things that it's like oh they knew so much and they were purposely doing these sort of high ceremonial powerful creating their temples and their pyramids and their standing stone circles and all those things to connect the sky with the earth in a sacred way and so they, and so we have those reminders that are still here, that certain star risings, certain seasonal points, certain things that are happening, we can tune into based on, on these structures that have been left from ancient times. And then the question is, how are we working with it now? How is it informing us now? And how are we informing it? And how, how is there this evolution that's taking place? Yes. 
so much there just so <laughs> many layers and you know anyway it's am all amazing it's probably a several lifetime study to say it. yes <laughs> yes yeah. i agree um yeah and i feel like so many of us i feel like those of us who are drawn to this and resonate with this probably have had many lifetimes already doing it i know i can say i have i'm sure you each have i mean it's just and then here we keep going yeah and yeah, so for, for many, it's just a remembering, like, yeah. I know when I was introduced to all of this, it was like a remembering for yes. me. It yes. still took me a while to get the details and be yeah. able to like, you know, figure it all out in this form. Yeah. <laughs> and that's something that it just takes the time it takes. We don't want to have to rush it uh, necessarily. And also people will sometimes get overwhelmed and then they, they think they have it and then they forget and then they need to come back and get it again. And it just, but it over time you, you get it. And then, and then it lives in you and it's just so cool. And to allow it to be what it is in this moment, not only, like you said, learning the history, but learning, yeah. understanding our own relationship as me, Martha, this, and this body right now in 2022 or beyond. Yeah. Anyway. Yes. And so you guys are helping me open the doors for myself and so many other people. <laughs> it's so wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Um, any other thing you feel called to say before we kind of wrap up? Just um, thank you so much. I'm really delighted we got to be here. We hope, I hope that this will, whoever feels inspired and passionate about this will uh, want to join us because of course we're inspired and passionate about this. <laughs> it's, it's, it's helping, it's helping at this turning of, of the ages. We're at a turning of a great age, way bigger than the age of Aquarius, a whole nother conversation, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people are, you know, get focused on that. That's a spring equinox point focus, whatever, that's fine. Um, but uh, that, that we're here to be witness to the turning of the great wheel of time from mm -hmm. one galactic year to a new galactic year. And that what we're doing is helping with that and how, what we're putting our focus and attention on, what we're, um, how we're engaging ceremonially and how we're engaging with each other, that is setting the template for the next 26,000 years. Mm -hmm. Eric, what were you gonna say? Beautiful. Oh, just on a, on a more personal level to, for each person to find and, and connect their own relationship with the sky and the earth, to go out there under the sky and connect with the stars and the planets, the sun, the moon, and be there with them. They are, they are part of the living embodiment of who we are and our full relationship, our, the totality of who we are, our human experience. And since, especially since the Industrial Revolution, we've really started to kind of block out the night sky. And this is now our chance to uh, continue to reclaim that sky for humanity, for us in our ongoing uh, relationship at this turning of a new age. As Caitlin pointed out, the great wheel is, is shifting and the stars are there. They have, in my view, the, the answers are all around us. The wisdom is there on the earth, within ourselves, in creation, um, um, in the sky. So the stars are part of that, part of the messenger uh, of the, the new knowledge, the old knowledge, and something that has yet to be created. And we get to co-create with them. Wonderful. Um, one practical question. Do people need to have any background, any astrological knowledge to be part of these classes? Can anybody join? Who Describe who you would want to join these classes. Anybody who has a passion for what it is we're doing. Uh, and it helps to have an astrological background, but it's not necessary. Uh, and it may be so for some people that might be the perfect place to jump into studying the astrological mysteries, because then you'll have this background to be able to use as you um, study those other mysteries, other ways of looking at things. Mm -hmm. So yeah, anybody who mm -hmm. wants, who feels aspired. Anybody who wants to. <laughs> anybody who wants yeah. to. Okay. <laughs> Great. Um, and is there anything else either of you want to say about in general, what each of you offer? I know you both uh, 
teach, mentor, do sessions? I know Eric does sessions. Kaylin, I don't know if you're. I, yeah, I do too. Still, still uh, do yeah, it, it, they can just go to our websites and, and awesome. see what we're up to. I mean, I know, I'm pretty sure Eric, you post what you're doing and I know I post what I'm doing. So <laughs> if they want to go, go check it out. Yeah. Yeah. We, I know we both, we both teach, uh, we both do webinars, classes, uh, talks, um, and I definitely do quite a few, uh, personal readings and mentor sessions. And, uh, as Martha, as you are aware, I actually launched a Patreon page for myself. Um, <laughs> And two days so, ago. Um, two days ago, and yeah. so I'm just just kind of getting uh, my head wrapped around that whole thing, but it's it's a lot of fun. And just to go into support, uh, we Kayla and I both have our own, you know, YouTube channels and social media presence. So we both share a lot about the sky and uh, astrology, and and my star alchemy also is something that we're uh, going to continue to build and share and to teach about the stars because we, I mean, it for me. I would love humanity to thrive through the knowledge of the stars and the planets. Wonderful. I'll just say quickly that I also do something called Venus alchemy and that might be a ah. conversation for another yes. time. And, yes. uh, <laughs> and I have Venus on the five pointed star behind me. So, you know, she's, she's got my back and um, alchemy. So some, somebody was asking me why alchemy and it's the process of taking something ordinary and turning it into something extraordinary. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's our whole intent. That's our whole purpose it's, and you know, there's also other definitions of alchemy, but that's my favorite one. So I just wanted to end with that. <laughs> Beautiful. Wonderful. Okay. Is that it? Does that feel complete? <laughs> it does. Wonderful. Thank you both so much. And, um, like I said, I feel like you're each, you are each gateways for me in various ways. So I'm very grateful for you. And I know that you're a gift to many, many, many others. As are you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> what did you say? Yes, one, you one to know. One to know one. <laughs> <clears throat> so many of us are gifts to each other. How about that? <laughs> there you go. Okay, there we go. Wonderful. Thank you. Welcome.